Hello and welcome to uh, me again. Hello, uh, Adrian Garrett here with the latest instalment of the musical quiz with me playing this, the violin, uh, some tunes which hopefully you will know, uh, accompanied by some questions. Um, so, uh, yeah, here we are. You find me on this website, um, CW Plus website. Uh, so I am normally resident in Chelsea and Westminster Hospital or West Middlesex Hospital where I play in awards uh, as patients. Uh, the occasional foyer concert as well, organised, of course, by the hospital charity CW+. Um, so this is now part of the um, Arts for All uh, Arts programme. Online, the virtual connections uh, instalment of that arts programme. Uh, I'm here with a quiz. Um, I've done eight of these. This is the ninth one. Uh, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, house rules. So I play uh, a lot of music. And I ask questions, three questions about each piece that I play, eight pieces, 24 questions in all, a couple of rollover questions. Um, get in touch using this email address, arts at cwplus.org.uk, if you wish. Um, let us know your feedback, let us know your suggestions, let us know things that you might like me to play in future. And hopefully I will receive those emails and uh, weave them seamlessly into the programme, which I play for you. Uh, so, there were some rollover questions from last week. Oh, hello, by the way, to you guys in the wards. Um, if you are watching on a Hospedia screen, some of you may be watching on a Hospedia screen next to your bed in a ward, if you're unfortunate enough to be in a ward at the moment. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, hello to you. You might be in Nell Green, you might be in Nightingale, you might be in Race for you might be in Lord Bigram, you might be in, uh, oh, who knows, uh, many wards I've been in Chelsea and Westminster, or possibly in Starlight Ward in um, in West Middlesex. So hello to you, um, and uh, hello to you at home, if you are at home. No matter what, you could be anywhere, you could be anywhere watching on your mobile device. Um, um, it's extremely hot here today, so I am, um, I've got some water, and uh, I've got a cloth as well, to dab my head in case of sweat, um, later on in the uh, in the performance. So. Uh, without further ado, roll over questions from last week, or last time, last session, session number eight. We had some roll over questions. Um, a roll over questions were, um, I played A Waltz of the Flowers from The Nutcracker by Tchaikovsky um, last time. And uh, it was a roll over question about that. So in The Nutcracker Ballet, um, I asked you what the Nutcracker, so there's a Nutcracker, obviously. Um, it's carved, it's wooden, it's carved in the shape of a character. And I asked you whether that character is a man, a woman, or a dog. And the answer is, it's a man. It's a man who comes on, who is sort of the hero of the story, not the hero really, but you know, massive involvement in Act Two when he comes alive. He comes alive, grows to full size, and uh, does all sorts of, it's quite a surreal, it's quite a surreal story. Anyway, so he's a man. And the other role of the question was um, uh, about the musical Mac and Mabel, which is written by, uh, oh, I can't remember, I can't remember who wrote it, Jerry Herman, I think, possibly. Um, anyway, it was it was American. Uh, it was on Broadway, and then it was brought over, and it was per first performed in a city in the UK, which is also the hometown of Torville and Dean, and that place is Nottingham. So there we go. The end of the questions. <coughs> Roll over questions from last week. I do play this thing. Oh, it's a beautiful morning today. Um, so. There we go, roll over questions, and now cracking on with the quiz for this week. The quiz for this week. We're going to start, we're going to start with a little piece of music by, um, by Strauss, um, which I did play a few weeks ago, I think. Um, so we, so it's, it's cropped up again, it's cropped up again in this, a different theme for this week. So it is a theme. Get your pens and pencils ready, ladies and gentlemen, or get ready to answer those questions in your head. Remember those answers for later when I give you the answers. Um, so the first question, or the first piece today, is the Blue Danube. Dancing welcome and encouraged.
Now that was an abridged version of the Blue Danube Waltz by Johann Strauss. Um, I don't know what percentage that was, probably about hmm, a quarter, a quarter of the whole thing. Not sure. Anyway, got to crack on with some questions. So uh, we had some questions before. Uh, the first one was about the river, I think. Um, I asked you, I think, what is the, so the Danube is the second longest river in Europe. I think I asked you the the um, the longest, and it is the Vol Volga, Volga, yeah, Volga. Um, so, uh, so we've established that fact. So uh, more river facts. So it's the second longest river to the Volga in Europe. Um, it passes through 10 countries, the Danube, um, 10 countries. Only one river in the world goes through more countries than the Danube. Uh, so my first question is, what is the name of the river that goes through more countries than the Danube? Only one river in the world. Um, it's a multiple choice. Start you off easy with a multiple choice. Is it A, the River Nile? Is it B, the River Amazon? Or is it C, the River Zambezi? So A, the Nile, B, the Amazon, C, the Zambezi. What is the name of the river that goes through even more countries than the Danube? More than 10 countries, only one river in the world. All right, so that's question number one. Question number two. Um, so Johann Strauss's waltz is used famously in the Stanley Kubrick film of 1968, um, the, yeah, 2001, A Space Odyssey, which I think we covered in the last questions as well. Um, now the film uses another very famous piece of music by another composer also called Strauss, Richard Strauss, Richard Strauss. Um, and my question is this, are Johann Strauss and Richard Strauss A, grandfather and grandson, B, great-great-grandfather <coughs> and great-great-grandson. Or C, not related at all. So, um, so Richard Strauss, who wrote that really famous one that goes like this, at the beginning of the film. Etc, etc. Um, Alzo Sprach Zarathustra. Um, I think it's a bit of that. Anyway, tone poem. It's a great piece. Uh, so, are Johann Strauss and Richard Strauss grandfather and grandson? A. B. Great great grandfather and great great grandson. B. Or C. Not related at all. That's question number two. Uh, question number three. In the Tom and Jerry cartoon, I mean, I had to put this question in because it's such a great name. In the Tom and Jerry cartoon, Johann Mouse. Round of applause there from all of you, I'm sure. Um, who learns how to play the waltz in Six Easy Lessons by Johann Strauss? Is it Tom or is it Jerry? Is it Tom or is it Jerry? Who learns how to play the waltz in Six Easy Lessons by Johann Strauss? Is it Tom or is it Jerry? That's in the famous cartoon, um, Johann Mouse, which I might have to look up and watch because it's it should be watched just for that title. All right, and now on to piece number two. Uh, right, so we have the Blue Danube, and now Blue Moon. Uh, Blue Danube, Blue Moon. Are you thinking about a theme? Are you thinking about a theme, ladies and gentlemen? Um, 
Right, so uh, it was written by um, uh, written by Richard Rogers of Rogers and Hammerstein fame, and uh, and the lyricist Lorenz Hart. Lorenz, 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 Lorenz Hart. Lorenz Hart. In uh, what year? What year did they write it in? It's a it's a year question. A year question. One point for the decade. Extra point for the actual year. All right. So what year was that song written in by Richard Hart and Loren No, Richard Rogers and Lorenz Hart. Perhaps it's before he started working with Hammerstein. Who knows? Um, so what year was it written in? <clears throat> question four. Question five. Oh, yes. Classic question. <clears throat> so Blue Moon was used, the song Blue Moon was used in a 1981 film, An American Werewolf in London. <clears throat> American Werewolf in London, 1981. It was used in the film. It was used more than once. And there were different versions of the song used in the film. So by different artists, you know, different different recordings of it. Um, so how many, the question is, how many different versions of that song are used in the film An American Werewolf in London? How many different versions are used in the film? Is it two? Is it ten? Who knows? Uh, so that's it. No multiple choice now. You know, you've had your multiple choice. Uh, it's getting tricky. So how many versions were used in the 1981 film An American Werewolf in London? And, uh, and lastly, more surreal, even more surreal than that last question. Question number six. Blue Moon Investigations is the name of the detective agency in what TV series from the 80s starring Sybil Shepherd? And Bruce Willis. So the Blue Moon Investigations is the name of the detective agency in what TV series from the 80s starring Sybil Shepherd and uh, Bruce Willis? Um, shall I give you a clue? I'm going to give you a clue. Uh, the name of the programme has got Moon in the title. All right, so uh, there we go. Question number six. Um, and now, on to a uh, famous bit of classical music now. Going a bit further back in time. Um, let's go with a bit like this. Uh, so that was from <clears throat> that was from uh, a piece called Jupiter, which is one of the planets uh, that uh, is written about uh, musically in a piece called The Planets. Um, and my question, my first question, question number seven, is uh, possibly a very simple question, possibly not. Um, what is the name of the composer who wrote The Planets? What is the name of the composer who wrote The Planets? Okay. Uh, question number eight. In the orchestral suite, the planets, um, each planet has a corresponding astrological character. So the question is, uh, what is Jupiter's? Is it the bringer of war? That's A. Is it B, the bringer of jollity? Or C, the bringer of peace? What do you think? Listen to that tune. Um, is it A, the bringer of war? B, the bringer of jollity? Or C, the bringer of peace? Um, there you go, that's question number eight. Question number nine. A version of this tune, which was set to words, is used as a theme song for the uh, World Cup of which sport? So a version of that song, set to words, is used as a theme song of uh, the World Cup of which sport? Which sport? Um, uses it should be easy. Uses that, that tune, but with words as well. All right, and now... It's not that. It's the next piece. Just got to remember how it goes. 
Um, oh yeah, I've got it. Just got to remember the first few notes, because otherwise I'm just going, well, where does it start? This is another famous song. Uh, coming back a, a bit more today now. Um, Moon River, um, written by uh, written by Henry Mancini and Johnny Mercer, um, for which 1961 film starring Audrey Hepburn? Which 1961 film starring Audrey Hepburn was that song written for? Uh, by Henry Mancini and Johnny Mercer. I think Oscar nominated song, I think, I think. My memory serves me correctly. That's question number 10. Question number 11. Um, which actor, um, later famous for his role in the A-Team, um, starred alongside Audrey Hepburn in that film? Uh, which actor, uh, famous later on for his role in the A-Team, um... <laughs> Uh, so what was his name? So he starred alongside um, Audrey Hepburn in that film, 1961 film. Uh, what's his name? And question number 12, question number 12. According to a, that's a great one. According to a 2007 poll, um, this is a massive clue, a massive clue to question number 10. All right. Um, according to a 2007 poll, what was the most popular breakfast enjoyed by Americans? Was it A, eggs? Was it B, cold cereal? Or was it C, a toast or muffins or a bagel or a pastry? What was the most uh, popular breakfast enjoyed by Americans, according to a poll in 2007? Was it A, eggs? Was it B, cold cereal? Or was it C, toast slash muffins slash bagel slash pastry? All right, so a big clue there to question number 10. And uh, that concludes section number one in this quiz. So now it's time for the answers. <laughs> All right, so the answers to section number one. Do you have them written down? Do you have them memorised? Yeah, you've got them memorised, haven't you? You could be bothered to write them down, I know, I know. And by the way, don't forget to get in touch. Artcwplus.org.uk with questions. There's loads of stuff on the website, by the way. Um, so if you're watching this and this is the first thing you found, check out all the other... So there's many artists in residence in the hospitals and they've all, well, they, pretty much all of them have done stuff, which is now on this website. So check it out. There's art, there's music, there's uh, oh, all sorts of things. Um, yeah, so um, check that out. All right, so um, answers question, section, number, well, that's section number one. Section number one, um, we started off with this. So uh, the Danube is the second biggest, second longest river in Europe after the Volga. Uh, it goes through 10 countries. Only one river in the world goes through more countries than the Blue Danube. Than the Danube, not the Blue Danube, the Danube. Um, and I asked you, what is the name of that river? Is it A, the Nile, B, the Amazon, or C, the Zambezi? A, the Nile, B, the Amazon, C, the Zambezi. Which one is it? It's A, the Nile, which goes through 11 countries, beats it by one. And those countries are, I don't know, starts in the middle of Africa, doesn't it? I think so, um, goes through, goes north, I think. Yeah. 
Um, go to Egypt. So uh, yeah, loads of them, loads of them. Um, perhaps you can work that out and tell me next week. Uh, perhaps I'll tell you next week. So 11 countries. Um, Johann Strauss's most famous waltz is used famously in Stanley Kubrick's 1968 film, uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey, which also features this piece. Written by Richard Strauss. Richard Strauss. So my question number uh, two was, are Johann Strauss and Richard Strauss A, grandfather and grandson, B, great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandson, or C, not related at all? And the answer is C, not related at all. Uh, they just happen to have the same name and are both brilliant. Um, and question three, in the Tom and Jerry cartoon, Johann Mouse, who learns to play the waltz in six easy lessons by Johann Strauss? Is it Tom or is it Jerry? And the answer is Tom. Uh, so there you go. Uh, let's go and watch that together. And the next piece was this one. Uh, Blue Moon, Richard, um, written by Richard Rogers and uh, Lorenz Hart. In what year? In what year? So one point for the right decade, which is the 1930s. An additional point, or 100, um, for the correct year, which is 1934. Written in 1934. Old song. Um, used in a 1981 film, An Aware American Werewolf in London. Um, obviously because of the moon connections. Um... How many different versions of the song are used in the film? Uh, there are different songs, different versions by different singers. Uh, there are three different versions, three different versions in that film. That's question number five. Question number six. Uh, Blue Moon Investigations is the name of a detective agency in what TV programme from the 80s? What TV programme from the 80s starring Sybil Shepherd, Shepherd and, uh, and Bruce Willis? And the answer is Moonlighting. Uh, on TV, on our screens between 1985 and 1989. Uh, so Moonlighting, there you go. Uh, and then we have this one. Uh, Jupiter from the planets, written by who? Um, question number seven. Uh, the planets, orchestral suite, written by who? Uh, Gustav Holst. Gustav Holst, who... Um, he, he taught in London and he spent most of his life in London, I think, in, in England. But I don't know whether he was born in Germany, but um, obviously he sounds like he's got a German name. I uh, should find that out. Find that out for next week. Tell you next week, possibly. Um, so uh, each, each planet in the orchestral suite has a corresponding astrological character. And I asked you, is Jupiter A, the bringer of war? B, the bringer of geology? Or C, the bringer of peace? And the answer is B, the bringer of geology. Um, the rest of that movement, so that tune that I played you is in the middle and there's a bit either side. And the bit either side is much more jolly than that tune. Um, so, but that's the famous bit. Uh, and a version of this tune set to words is used as the theme song for the World Cup of which sport? And that sport is, of course, as you all know, I'm sure, Rugby Union. Rugby Union. And then the last piece I played for you in this section is Moon River. Um, composed by Henry Mancini and Johnny Mercer for the 1961 film. And the film is called Breakfast at Tiffany's. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, which actor, question number 11, which actor later famous for his role in the A-Team, starred alongside Audrey Hepburn in the film? His name is George Peppard. See, I just knew him from the A-Team when I was a kid. And uh, to me, he was a sort of funny actor. Didn't know he had a serious career before that. Um, and then according to a 2007 poll, what was the most popular breakfast enjoyed by Americans? 2007, what was the most popular breakfast enjoyed by Americans? Was it A, eggs, B, cold cereal, or C, toast slash muffins slash bagels slash a pastry? And the answer is B, cold cereal. There you go. And now it's time for the intermission. We're going to have a brief intermission today, which goes like this. Cheery one. Now, I'm recording this on possibly the hottest day of the year so far. Hence the... Um, doing all right here. So I thought we'd have an appropriate intermission. Now, the intermission, no questions. So relax, relax during this brief tune.
there you go. Uh, you are my sunshine because it is beautiful and sunny today. Hopefully it is where you are watching. <clears throat> and now, uh, cracking on with part two of the quiz. Are you ready? Pens in hands, brains engaged. What's the theme, by the way? Have you worked out the theme yet? Uh, the theme will be revealed at the end. Uh, so here we go. This is piece of music number five. So, uh, fly me to the moon. Fly me to the moon. Uh, sounds much better with the voice, doesn't it? Um, anyway, so uh, it was written by um, Bert, Bart Bart Howard. Bart Howard. There we go. Is the name I've never heard of? Um, Bart Howard in 1954. He wrote that. Um, it had a different title. It had a different title taken from the lyrics of the song. Uh, so, my first question, question number 13. What is this other title that it first had? Very tricky question there. So uh, don't worry if you don't know that one. Um, so um, yeah, think about the words of the song. Think about what the other time might have been. So a different title in 1954. Um, which famous producer, question number 14, tricky question isn't this one. Um, which famous music producer who worked extensively with Michael Jackson later in his career, his very extensive career, I mean, unbelievable career, um, arranged the version that Frank Sinatra recorded on his album, It Might As Well Be Swing in 1964. So what's the name of the producer who worked on um, on the version that Frank Sinatra sang for his album It Might As Well Be Swing in 1964? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know him with his work with Michael Jackson, but his, his career dates back way, way further back than that. Uh, and uh, question number 15, third question, the Frank Sinatra version of this song was apparently the first song ever to be played where in 1969. So the Frank Sinatra version of this song was apparently the first song to be played ever somewhere. Where was that place? Where was that place in 1969? I mean, it's a giveaway, it's a giveaway. So it was played for the first time. It was the first song ever to be played there. Where is it in 1969? Got that? All right, and now another beautiful old song. Um, which, oh yeah, I learned, I learned for someone who was, who was in hospital at some point, um, because it was a favourite of her mum, and I'd never heard it before, i never heard of the person who sang it, um, but it's a, it's a lovely song, so hopefully you'll know this one.
So that is a song called um, Welcome to My World. And it's been sung by a few people, but um, most famously by uh, a guy called Jim Reeves, American sort of country singer, really. Um, he had a big hit in uh, in the UK as well. In what year? What year did he have a big hit with that in? Um, I'll give you a clue. It's the 1960s. So a year in the 60s. Pick your number. Um, big hit for Jim Reeves in the UK in what year? Um, now, the bridge section in the middle of the song, the bit that goes... Um, contains lyrics taken from which book? Uh, the clue is, it's the best-selling book in the world. Uh, so it contains lyrics from which book? Um, there you go. You might even know which which bit of the book. Uh, if you really know your Jim Reeves well. I didn't know that. Um, so it contains lyrics from which book? Best-selling book in the world. Uh, and question number 18. According to Wikipedia, um, Jim Reeves... Jim Reeves is the all-time most popular English language singer in which South Asian um, island country off the southern tip of India. Um, so according to Wikipedia, Jim Reeves is the all-time most popular English language singer um, in which South Asian island country off the southern tip of India. Which country is he incredibly famous in? I love that sort of random, random stuff where you, you go to these countries and you go, why is this bloke so famous here? Um, I don't know how he came that famous. Anyway, so that was question number 18. So name of a country where Jim Reeves is very famous. Uh, and now another, oh, another classic. Another classic. Um, now what key should I do this one? I'm going to do it in D. Uh, so that, as I'm sure you know, is the opening of the second movement of uh, Dvorak's New World Symphony, which I think is number nine. Um, so he wrote a few. Uh, it was it was really successful. So quite a lot of classical pieces. You read that when they were premiered, when the first time they were played, everyone thought they were rubbish. And they were panned and the critics hated them and people walk out of theatres and... Um, it's a hard slog, I think, for some of these composers who, who nowadays they're revered, but in their day they wrote stuff and they were like, oh, rubbish. Um, but he wasn't like that. So Dvorak, when he was in America, it was premiered in New York, I think, and uh, everyone went crazy. They burst into spontaneous applause after every movement, which is now not the done thing to do in classical music. You know, if you're going to see a if you're going to see a symphony with four movements, you have to you have to sit there silently until the end. Which I think is a bit silly. Um, anyway, people loved it. So that was nice that he got some recognition in his own time. Anyway, uh, coming down to earth now. Um, it was used, as I'm sure you know, for a very famous advert um, in 1973. Oh, what a great year that was. Um, the uh, Hobus advert was made and um, and it's obviously synonymous. I think it's voted as the most famous advert ever or the most popular advert ever. Um, anyway, it was directed by someone who was quite famous, directed by a famous English film director. Um, so my question is, what was his name? Uh, was it A, Ridley Scott, 
B, Mike Lee, or C, Richard Attenborough? So was that advert, was the Hovis advert directed by A, Ridley Scott of Aliens fame, B, Mike Lee of uh, many films fame, A Nuts in May? Is that one of his? I think so. Um, or C, Richard Attenborough, brother of David. Um, famous for, yeah, directing and acting, I think. Don't know my film stuff. Uh, anyway, so Ridley Scott, Mike Lee or Richard Attenborough. Um, uh, question number 20, the hill used in the advert, that incredibly steep cobbled hill, which I'm sure you can conjure up out of your memory, is in a town in which county in England? Which county in England? Is it a town in A, Dorset? Is it a town in B, Yorkshire? Or is it a town in C, Kent? Hmm. Dorset, Yorkshire or Kent? All right, very good. Uh, question number 21. Um, incredibly, so researching this, I mean, I love this sort of stuff. Um, who took a recording of this piece, Dvorak's New World Symphony, with him on his trip to the moon in 1969? Now, if that isn't a big hint to a question that we had a little while ago, I don't know what it is. Um, who took a recording of this piece to, uh, to the moon with him on his trip there in 1969? Who was it who took a recording of that piece to the moon? Uh, right, and there we go. We've, we've almost come to the end. Uh, so this is the last piece now, last piece. Last piece of this quiz. Um, by the way, I think the themes that we might have to think of a new idea. Uh, the themes it might end quite soon. So uh, this might be the penultimate themed quiz. Um, we'll see. Anyway, so still still thinking about the theme for this week uh, or this session. Session number nine. Session number nine. Um, last one. We've got a bit of drama now. A bit of drama. You may know this one. So uh, it's written by who? What's the famous composer? Uh, question number 22, that was question number 23. Um, which character is this bit of music associated with in the films? I mean, these, these are the easy questions. We're finishing with some easy ones here. Which character in the movies, in the Star Wars movies, is that bit of music associated with? And question number 24, uh, which Star Wars film, which Star Wars film was this music composed for? Which Star Wars film was this piece of music composed for? Is it 1980? All right, so uh, there we go. That concludes the questions for this week. Um, and now it's time for... <laughs> Answers part two. Um, all right, so we started off with this one. Uh, Flying to the Moon, uh, written by Bart Howard in 1954. Um, it had a different title. Yeah, these are difficult questions. Uh, taken from the lyrics of the song. Um, so what was, the, uh, what was the other title, the first title of this song, before it was known as Flying Me to the Moon? And the answer is, um, in other words. That was it, in other words. Okay, so. Uh, do -be -do. So, in other words, is the first title of that song. Uh, question number 13. Question number 14. Which famous producer, who worked extensively with Michael Jackson later on in his career, um, produced, the, um, uh, produced the Frank Sinatra version uh, of Nick 1964? 
Uh, so which famous producer? And it is Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones. Um, check out his career. Unbelievable. And he here's, here's an interesting fact. Uh, so that so that song is uh, the version I played. Oh, it's, it's, it's a mu it's a muso thing. It's in four four. It was originally in three four, but Quincy Jones stuck it in four four when he arranged it. So for Frank Sinatra. So previous versions um, were in three four. There you go. Um, so anyway, the Frank Sinatra version of this song was first song ever to be played where in 1969. It was of course on the moon. On the moon. Uh, so yeah, that song was taken up there on some sort of Sony cassette player, I think. Brilliant fact. Um, and played on the moon. Um, and then we have this one. It sounds a little bit like... It is, it's exactly the same beginning. Um, and then Welcome to My World. Welcome to my world. Exactly the same. Who wrote it first? It was, oh uh, yeah, Bart Howard. Bart Howard way before Welcome to My World. Anyway, American singer Jim Reeves had a hit with that in 1963. Um, I don't know when it was written actually. Yeah, I didn't find that out. So perhaps it was first. Anyway, he had a hit in 1963. Um, that was the answer. 1963, he had a hit with it. Um, so in the bridge section, in the middle section of that song, uh, contains lyrics from which book, which famous book? Uh, it's the best-selling book in the world. It is, of course, the Bible. Uh, it's Matthew's Gospel. Um, so it quotes from Matthew's Gospel in the middle of section of that song. Um, and then according to Wikipedia, Jim Reeves is the all-time most famous English language singer in which country in Asia? Uh, and the answer is Sri Lanka. Apparently he's massive in Sri Lanka. There you are. Um, so go over there and get your Jim Reeves recordings. Um, and then we have this one, the Hobus advert. It's in C major there, did it in D major before. Uh, so Dvorak, New World Symphony, second movement, famous bit. Um, which famous English film director directed the 1973 Hovis advert? Was it A, Ridley Scott? Was it B, Mike Lee? Or was it C, Richard Attenborough? And the answer is R Ridley Scott. Who'd have thought it? So there's a fact to baffle your friends with. Uh, Ridley Scott directed the Hovis advert. Brilliant. Um, question number 20. Uh, the hill used in the advert, the cobbled hill, um, is in a town in which English county? Is it A, Dorset, is it B, Yorkshire, or is it C, Kent? And the answer is A, Dorset. Hmm, there you go. Uh, it's called Hovers Hill, but it wasn't originally called Hovers Hill, it is now. Um, and uh, here we go, harking back to the previous uh, piece of music I played, who took a recording of this piece with him when he went to the moon in 1969? Neil Armstrong. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. So, so Neil Armstrong took uh, Fly Me to the Moon and also the Hovis advert. I mean, it wasn't yet the Hovis advert, but not far off, four years, only four years. Anyway, um, and then we finished with this. favourite pieces of all time, uh, written by the legendary, written by the legendary question number 22, John Williams, writer of so many wonderful film scores um, and uh, knower of classical music like the back of his hand. He wrote loads of music as well. He wrote loads of um, uh, orchestral music and uh, chamber music, all sorts of things, in addition to his massive amount of film music. So uh, yeah, check out his back catalogue if you haven't already. It's amazing. Uh, so he wrote that. Uh, little number. Uh, which character is that piece associated with in the Star Wars films? It is, of course, Darth Vader. The Imperial March, Darth Vader's music. Follows him everywhere he goes, even when he goes to the loo. He's playing in the loo. Um, and uh, question number 24, um, which Star Wars film was it written for? So it wasn't in the first one, yeah. um, but it was in the second one. It was in the second one, which is, of course, The Empire Strikes Back, 1980. So first one, 1977, second one came out in 1980, and that's what John Williams wrote that music for. So um, there we go. That concludes the quiz.
End of questions, end of answers. Did you get the theme? Let's have a little recap of the music I played. The Blue Danube by Strauss, um, used in the film 2001, A Space Odyssey. Blue Moon, Jupiter, Moon River, Find Me to the Moon, Welcome to My World, uh, Dvorak's New World, and Star Wars. So I think the theme is space. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme is space. I hope you've got that. Um, and uh, we've got a couple of rollover questions, of course. Um, rollover question number one. Rollover question number one for next time. Go away and think about this. Um, which instrument is the famous tune from Dvorak's New World Symphony? This one. So that's played on an instrument in the orchestral version of it, orchestral version of it. Um, slightly unusual instrument. Uh, so my question is, which instrument plays that tune in the original orchestral version that Dvorak wrote? Um, and question number two. Um, yeah, this is... So at the end of the planets, Holst used a sort of musical device at the end of the last planet, which I think is... Is it Neptune? I don't know what planets. It's not Pluto because they didn't they haven't found it. But I mean, it's not a planet anyway. But yeah, the last one. Anyway, the last one, either Uranus or Neptune. Neptune, I think. Um, at the end of that, he used a musical device, which I think was the first time it had ever really been used in classical music. Now, it's used all the time now in pop music. Not all the time, but quite often. Quite often, pop music songs end using this device. Um, but Holst was a bit of a pioneer. He did it. I think it was the first time it had ever really been used in classical music. Um, I haven't really thought about that before. I sort of know the piece. Anyway, so what is that musical device? What is the musical device that Holst used at the end of the Planet Suite? Now quite commonly used in pop recordings. Um, and that's it. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, the end of quiz number nine. Um, it's me saying goodbye. Um, remind you of the email address, arts at cwplus.org.uk. If you've enjoyed this, by the way, do spread the word because um, there's lots of these videos on the website, as I said, check them out. And uh, if you think there are other people who might enjoy them in these strange times, uh, then do spread the word about them. So the email address, if you want to get in touch, arts at cwplus.org.uk. Sorry about my mumblings. Uh, my name is Adrian Garrett. Have a safe and uh, healthy um, period until the next time we meet, either here or possibly in a hospital at some point. Um, hopefully, 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 hopefully things will be getting back to normal and the artists in residence will be in hospital soon. But we don't know. We don't know. Um, but yeah, stay well. Um, hope you've enjoyed this. Spread the word. And uh, bye bye for now. Bye bye. Bye bye.